In coding interviews, one of the most important things is being able to code your ideas out very quickly. There's a lot of different tricks that we can use in JavaScript to be able to do this. So in this video, I want to look at a few of those. So for example, here we have this function called get coordinates and it has an X and Y value. You can imagine we are calculating these in some way and then we need to actually return both values. So how can we do this? Well, the trick that we tend to use is to simply return an array. So we're going to say return and we'll have X and Y as an array. So now get coordinates is going to return this essentially tuple with X and Y, but it is going to be an array. And then when we want to actually use those values, we're going to use destructuring. So we're going to say const and we'll have X comma Y is going to be equal to a call to get coordinates. And essentially what this is doing is saying call get coordinates, which is going to return this array and then get those values from the array. So the first value, so the value at index zero is going to be saved in this X variable and the value at index one or the second value is going to be saved in Y. And we can see if I come down here and do constant log X and Y, this is going to work. So it gives us the 10 and 20 values. So essentially whenever you have some function and you need to be able to get multiple values out of that function, one easy way to do that is simply going to be to return an array. And then whenever you call the function to use the array syntax again, to destructure those values out of the return value. This is one of the most common mistakes I see in JavaScript, especially in coding interviews. They can really trip you up because you won't even realize what you did until further down the line and it can just cause all of these different problems. So here we have a numbers array with 10, one and five, and we sort the numbers and then log out the numbers. And now what do you expect is going to happen here? What is going to be the result? Well, if I run this, you can see we get one, 10 and then five. And why is this? Well, we're using the default sort function and this function actually isn't intended for numbers. It's intended by default to work with strings. So it's actually converting these to strings, sorting them that way, and then converting back to the original values. So we end up with one and then 10 is the next value as a string because we just look at the first character. So one is less than five. So we end up with 10 is less than five. So we have one, 10, and then five, but we can change how sort works by simply passing it a comparison function. So for example, we can say we have some function that takes in our our X and Y values. And all we want to do if we want to end up with ascending order is to simply say X minus Y is going to be the return value. And now we do have one, five, and then 10. So this is just a pattern to remember that if you want ascending order, you're going to pass in a comparison function with X and Y that's going to return X minus Y. And if you do want the opposite order, of course we can do the opposite. So we could say Y minus X, and then this is going to give us 10, five, one. One of the most common patterns in coding interviews is to have some array of values and need to remove the duplicates. So for example, here we have one, two, two, and then three. And JavaScript actually gives us a pretty simple way we can do this, and that is by utilizing a set. So a set is another data structure, so we can say const set is going to be equal to a new set. And the constructor here can take in an array. And what's good about sets is that sets do not have any duplicates, they remove all of the duplicates. So if I said console.log out our set, we would see we do have the set with one, two, and three. But of course, we might not actually want a set. We might want an array without the duplicates. So what we could do instead is say unique array, and we're going to make this equal to this new set, but we're going to pass it into an array and then spread the values. So we have a new array with the new set with those values spread. And then we can, instead of console logging out our set, we will console log the unique array. Now you can see we have this array of one, two, three. So again, what we're doing here is creating a new set with our array in the constructor, meaning we're taking all of the values from this array and putting them into a set. And a set is going to automatically remove the duplicates. And then we spread that set. So we take all of the values from that set and we add them into this new array here. So we are creating a new array with these unique values. Of course, the original array is still going to be untouched. So this still has one, two, two, and then three. Here we have a function called beg and it simply logs out please and then some request. So for example, please subscribe. And you can see we get please subscribe down here. But what would happen if I called beg without a parameter? Would this throw an error? What's going to happen? Well, we're simply going to see please and then undefined because the value of request just defaults to being undefined. However, sometimes we actually want to have some default value and this can be very useful in a lot of different contexts. But the way we can do this is simply by adding an equal sign and then whatever we want 
the default value to be. So for example, I'll just put default here just so we can see it working. You can see we have please and then default. Maybe I want the default to be follow. We would see please follow. And where this tends to be most useful is things like when you need to pass in an optional Boolean flag, but you want the default to just always be false if it's not passed in, or maybe you need to pass in some number. And by default, if there is no number, you want to use zero or something like that. This can be very useful for that. Oftentimes in coding interviews, we need to, for some reason or another, clone an object. And there's a few ways to do this in JavaScript, but I want to show you two of the more common ones that I tend to use most often. So I'm going to say const clone, and this is going to be equal to a new object. And then we're going to use the spread operator. So it's going to be three dots and then our OBJ. And this is going to create a new object with all of the values from this object. So now if I come down here and say, console.log, our clone, you'll see it has the same values as the original array. So it looks the exact same. Now, one note is this happens sort of at the surface level. So we are cloning all of the key value pairs in this object. So we have A and B. So what this means though, is that we aren't going deep into these nested objects. So if I was to do clone.b triple equals obj.b, you'll see this is actually true. These are the same object. So these are both pointing to this. So this also means if I did something like clone.b.c is going to be equal to five. And now I went here and I logged out obj.b.c, you can see we get five. So the clone is not entirely separate from the object. However, this is where the other option comes in and that is using structured clone. So instead of this, I'm going to call a function that is called structured clone and pass in our obj. And now you'll see we actually have two is obj.b.c. But if I was to do clone.b.c, it is five. And if we come here and just log out clone, you'll see it is an exact clone just with five for b.c. And of course, if I comment this out, we have the original clone once again. So the primary difference is if you use the spread operator, it's not going to clone the nested values. We're just going to have the same nested objects. And if we use structured clone, it is going to go deeply nested into our object. A common thing we need to do in coding interviews is just create some array of some size with some initialized values. And this can be a little bit tricky to figure out how to do in different languages, but there's an easy way to do it in JavaScript. So this is something to just remember for coding interviews. So let's say we have some array and we want this to be a new array. So we're going to use the new array syntax instead of just using the bracket. So we're not going to say the array is something like this because then we have to manually add all of the values. Instead, we're going to say new array and we can pass in a number here. So for example, the number 10, and this is going to be the size of the array. Then we're going to call the fill function and fill it with whatever values we want. So for example, zero. And now I could come down here and say constant log our array. And you'll see we have an array with 10 values filled as zero. And if we did not do this fill, so if I did just this, you'd see we have 10 empty slots. So we do typically want to use that fill to put in whatever value we want. And of course, we could use any different type here. So we could also do something like an empty string. You'd see we have this array now of 10 empty strings. In coding interviews, it's pretty common to need to take some array and check, does that array have some value that fulfills some condition? For example, some value that is even, or does it have all the values fulfilling some conditions. So for example, are all of the values in an array even? There's actually a very easy way to do both of these things in JavaScript. So I'm going to come down here and say const has even. This is going to be equal to array.sum. And this function takes in a, another function that is going to run on each value in the array until it finds something that fulfills the condition. So for example, we'll have our val and we want to check is val mod two strictly equal to zero, because if this is the case, we have an even value. So if I come down here now and do constant log our has even, you'll see this is going to be true because we do have an even value of two. But if I made this say 21, it would now be false because there are no even values. And if we want to check out all of the values even instead of just some even value, what we can do is instead of array.sum, we'll do array.every. And this is going to check every single value. So this is going to be false. You'll see if I put this back to two though, it is still false because one and three are not even. But if I made this say 10 and 30, now we have true because every value in this array is even. Oftentimes we want to get the minimum and maximum values out of some array, but how do we actually do that in JavaScript? Well, we can come down here and we can say const min is going to be equal to a call to math.min. But what exactly do we pass in here? Because if say we pass in the whole array, well, this isn't really going to work. So I could say console.log our min, 
And you'll see, we just get NA in because it doesn't really know what to do with this array. This expects a comma separated list of values. So say five and 10, it's going to return five. But how do we get that from our nums? Well, we can use the spread operator. So three dots and then nums. So it's going to turn the array into a comma separated list. And now we get one, which is the minimum value. And if I did say math.max and I'll change this to be max and I run this, you'll see now we get five because five is the maximum value. And this is not just the last value, it is actually the maximum. So if I put say zero after, we still get five. I've shown this before, but it is so, so important. So I'm going to show it again. And that is how to swap two different values in JavaScript. This is something you do a lot with say linked lists when you need to swap pointers around. But in this case, we're just swapping A and B. So we know we could do something like A is going to be equal to B and then B is going to be equal to A. And then if I said console.log, a and B, you'll see we get 10 and 10 because we set A equals to B. So A is now 10 because B is 10. Then we set B equal to A, but A is 10. We just did that here. So now we're setting both of them equal to 10, which is not what we want. So the easy way to solve this is with some temporary values. So we could say let temp equal A, and then instead of B equals A, we would do B equals our temp value. And now we have 10 and five. And this is a way you can do this. And this is a perfectly okay way to do this. But there's also some syntactic sugar we can use in JavaScript to make this a bit simpler. So what I'm going to do is use destructuring. So I'm going to say A comma B is going to be equal to an array of B comma A. So the way this works is we create a new array with B and A in it. So we have 10 and then five, and then we set the values of A and B, which are these variables we've already created to be the first value of this array, which is B and the second value of this array, which is A. So if I run this, you can see we do get 10 and five like this. Now, just as important as being able to write code quickly in coding interviews is being able to write code cleanly. And for that, you should watch this video next.